This video is going to look at the repeated test annotation that has been introduced with JUnit 5. We're going to look at when you might want to use it and the different ways that we can customize this annotation. The repeated test annotation was introduced with JUnit 5 and provides the ability to run the same test but multiple times. Uh, this annotation will have very rare use cases where a method may not have completely deterministic behavior uh, but a specific response is expected within a certain number of attempts. Uh, but regardless, it's quite an interesting annotation with a few ways that we can customize it. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I have a test here that will simply print out testing to the console and I can change the annotation of at test with at repeated test to tell JUnit to run the test multiple times. And this all comes out of the box with JUnit 5. So the repeated test annotation expects at least one argument, and that's going to be a number which will represent how many times the test is going to be repeated. So I'm just going to pass in the number two and run the test. We can see the test has run twice with the output in the bottom left as repetition one of two and then two of two. If I change the value to five, we can then see the same output, except this is going all the way up to five. So what we can see so far is that the repeated test annotation is going to repeat our test X number of times. So we can customize our output in the bottom left by passing in different values to the repeated test annotation. So first, I'm just going to change this first argument of just five to value equals five, and it means the exact same thing. And then we can also update a parameter called name. And by default, the name is going to have the value of short display name um, assigned to it. And this is imported from the Jupyter API package. And the short display name will not make any difference to our test results. So let me just run it one more time. And in the bottom left, we can see it performing the exact same output. But if I change the name to long underscore display underscore name, the individual test runs will now show the name of the test method followed by two colons and the repetition information as we saw before. So this can just be useful for reviewing which tests are passing and which are failing if we were to say run all of the tests within a test class. And the final way that we can customize the display name in the test is with three different parameters which also come out of the box which we can pass in through curly braces. So we have a display name, we have current repetition and total repetitions and all of these are quite self-explanatory when we look at them from high above. So I can create a new name within quotes so I'm just going to put a repetition then colon then within curly braces I'm just going to put current repetition I'm then going to put off method, and then curly braces, display name, out of, and then within curly braces, total repetitions. So now if we run the test, we can see the output being displayed below, and this is just going to print a slightly more readable uh, sort of understanding to us of what test is being run, how many times we're repeating it, and what the test name is. The very last feature that we're going to look at with the repeated test annotation is obtaining access to the current repetition and total repetition values. However, we're going to obtain access to these within the test block itself. So if we pass in an argument to our method, which is going to be an instance of the repetition info object, which is also from the JUnit package, we can then obtain the current repetition and total repetitions from it. So all I'm going to do is just print them out to the console so we can see how that works. And that's it. So that concludes this video on how you can use the repeated test annotation. It provides some pretty handy methods to customize the test output, but I may not expect you to find yourself using it too often at all.